It's not enough to be in church, but the church is not in you. Just the form of godliness and denying the power of God. Drawing nigh with my mouth, but my heart is for all. I want to.
Let the little children come. Let the little children come. Let the little children come to me. Let the little children come. Let the little children come. Let the little children come to me. And do not forbid them. Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning, adults. And to our visitors, good morning. It's the children's story time. Now, boys and girls, I have a very interesting story for you this morning. And before I tell you the story, I have a little thing, something in my bag, which is a part of our story. Now, this morning, our story is entitled, Do Your Honest Part. What's the name of the story? Some of you may have heard the story already. And there are theme text is from St. Matthew 5 and verse 16. Okay, it says, "Let go with me. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Now the story is told of a man named Jackson. Are you all with me? Now this man had a special job to do. He was the watchman at the railway station. And he was given one little object. Now, can you tell me the name of this little object? What, what is this object? All right, some say lamp, some say lantern. Let me see those who say lantern. Wonderful, now next week you get a pencil. Great, thank you very much, this is a lantern. Now, Jackson was given a little lantern. And he was asked to wave this lantern Whenever the train was approaching, Jackson did this job for many, many years. But it happened that one night, can you tell me what happened? No, Jackson fell asleep. And there was a blast of the train, loud and long. But Jackson was fast asleep. He didn't hear the horn of the train. Now there was another blast of the train. By then it was coming at full speed. And he was to warn the person at the intersection that the train was about to, pro to approach so they were not to go across. Now when Jackson got out of his bed this time, guess what happened? The train was so close that he woke up out of his bed and he grabbed his lantern and he began to wave it frantically all over. Stop, stop, stop. He was saying to the train driver, but guess what happened? Nobody heard him. And just as the train reached the intersection, it bang into a little red car that was trying to pass the line before the train approaches. Now, dead among them was a family of five persons, a mother, a father, and the three children. Now, Jackson had to face tribunal, sorry, he had to face court, and he was asked one question. Then he was to go to the tribunal, and he was asked the same question. Jackson, where were you? when you heard the train. He said, I was on my duty. I was at work. I was at a little spot you gave me to stay. Jackson, what did you do when you heard the train? He said, I, at first I fell asleep, but I jumped out of my sleep and I began to wave my lantern and I waved it frantically, but the train would not stop. Now he went to the court at the tribunal. He was asked the same question. And finally, Jackson was freed. He went home to his wife. And she cooked a delicious meal for him. But Jackson did not eat. This went on for day one and day two. Jackson did not eat anything that the wife cooked for him. He just kept crying. And the wife finally went to him and said, My darling, why are you crying? The judges say you are free. But Jackson dropped his voice and said, I waved my lantern, but it was not lit. Can you imagine? waving to the train to stop, waving for everybody to see, but there was no light in the lantern. Now, boys and girls, here we are at church. 
Let me see hands of those of you who go to school. When you go to school, you all want to shine for your parents. You want to shine for Jesus. Am I right? And others, we want to shine for Jesus. We want to shine our lights that others will see. But what happens when your lights are out? When your lamps are not lit? So let me tell you now, boys and girls, as you go through this world, as you go to school, remember, let your light shine so that others will see and they too will come to glorify God. I want one child to pray and after which we are going to sing this little light of mine and I want to hear everybody singing. Will somebody pray for me, please? One little boy who wants to pray, one little girl who wants to pray. Yes, a little girl with her hand. Father in heaven, I thank you for the, the rain, and I hope we be good boys and girls, and let us shine for Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Are you going to put your hands and clap now? This little light of mine, sing everybody, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Go back to your seats, I just sing. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine until Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, shine, let it shine. Thank you, boys and girls. And go back to your seats, and you're gonna let your little light shine until Jesus comes. God bless you. Let the little children come, let the little children come to me. Let the little children come, let the little children come, let the little children come to me. And do not forbid them, do not forbid them, for so is the kingdom of heaven. Good morning, church. Our scripture reading is taken from Psalm 103, verse 1 to 3. When you found it, please stand. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgive all our iniquities, who heals all our diseases. May the Lord have his blessing to his holy words.
to the great I am, the great God of heaven, as we pray. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Our loving Father, we come this morning in your temple to lift high your holy name. We come in no other name but in the name of Jesus. That at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that there is power in the name of Jesus. There is healing in the name of Jesus. So this morning, Lord, thy children come to you to open their hearts and to acknowledge you as the great creator, the great sustainer, the provider, the protector of heaven and earth. As we contemplate the theme, Lord, for this morning, for the campaign coming up, Lord, we ask at this time, Lord, as we listen to the different messages and admonitions from morning until now, we ask, Lord, in a special way that we will be indeed transformed, our habits, our lifestyle, that whatever we say and do in our words, these thoughts and action may it reflect you, Lord, we pray. We ask now, Lord, for the presence of your Holy Spirit in a special way to be here with us. May you walk up and down, O Holy Spirit, in each aisle. Touch each worshiper today, boys and girls, adults, may, men and female. We ask, Lord, that your sweet Holy Spirit may just dwell among us today. We ask, Lord, that you may just bring about healing, dear Lord, for our sin-sick souls. Cleanse us from everything that is unlike you so that we can prepare to meet, receive the message that you have sent through your manservant. We ask in a special way now, Lord, for an anointing, an anointing on each worshiper. Oh, Lord, we cannot get enough. We need, Lord, more than ever. Prepare us, dear Lord. Give, grant us that zeal to go out and to tell others to come and taste and see that the Lord is good. Dear Lord, as we pause, may your holy angels tabernacle with us today, and may your sweet Holy Spirit grant your man servant a special anointing. So, Lord, as he speaks, the words may come straight from you, and may some heart or hearts be wounded for your eternal kingdom. Lord, grant us the peace, the joy that we need. Ask, Lord, that you may just let us be one, united in all that we do. As Seventh-day Adventists, Lord, help us to be indeed that light to this dark world of sin. Take over now, Lord. Take over. In your hand, we submit all things. May you ward off all the evil and darkness in and around this place. And may your guardian angels now just take up control. Be with each family, worshiping from the different areas here today. And may the Sabbath day's blessing be ours. This we ask in no other name, but in the wonderful and precious name of Jesus. Oh, thou who
I pray today that the Sabbath hours with you is bright. That you are experiencing the power and the presence of the Most High God. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. That is the scriptural meditation that the Women's Ministries Department of the Northeast Jamaica Conference will focus on for the quadrennium 2018-2022. We have decided and purposed in our hearts that we will be transformed. We will be united and empowered. We have decided that we will grow our sisters and by extension our brothers. Today we are happy that you are here and you have been welcomed by our immediate past director, Sister Carol Joy Woodburn. What a joy it is to be trying to walk in the shoe of Sister Woodburn. I know I'm no match for that, but I'm trying, and by God's power and his grace, I'm going to walk in my own shoe. Today we're happy to be here and to welcome one and all to this convocation. We have decided to divide our convocations. So today we meet here for Portland and on the 2nd of March, which is the day of prayer, we will meet in the Geddes Mountain Church in St. Mary for the St. Mary Convocation. We believe, brothers and sisters, that we cannot make it on our own. We have no strength of our own. Therefore, we want to commit ourselves in the hands of the Lord. So we're happy that you have come to join us and I am seeing the sisters and brothers coming from all across Portland. This afternoon it's going to be even a greater presentation. Some churches are having communion, etc., etc. We're kind of competing against ourselves in the conferences and in the union because the calendar of events is tightly packed. So we understand. Today I'm happy to present to you our special guests. We have Lady First, Dr. Deborah Williams, who has been with us since last evening and is staying at Timbambu. Thank you, Elder Panton. And so she has been with us from morning and I think it is only but fitting that I use this opportunity to introduce her to you. Dr. Williams, will you please stand? Okay, so that's the lady. And if you have looked at Smile Jamaica, you would have seen that face. Dr. Williams is a naturopathic doctor. NCUC, we have one table over on that side. We have one on this side. The one on this side is uh, well put together. The other one on this side, mm, not so. Mm, and you will understand as she will explain to you later what these two tables are about. Dr. Williams is a breast cancer survivor. And I say that to say, ladies, and in some rare cases, men, all hope is not gone. There are those who have survived and are surviving and have lived to tell the tale. So we commonly say, if fish come from the bottom and tell you that grass is down there, believe. I ask you, therefore, to come on out this afternoon, beginning at 3 o'clock. Dr. Williams will be making presentations. 
and she has decided to stay over with us into the night so that those who want to look at her a second time not married but those who want to look at her for medicinal purposes Dr. Kirkland please come on by this afternoon and even if you don't want to look at Dr. Williams you want to hear what she has to tell us so please make this a packed house this afternoon then to my immediate left closest to my heart I don't know is Pastor James Patterson or a uh, son of the soil he's not from Timbuktu he is from Mount Pleasant mm -hmm. I know you didn't know that he is from Mount Pleasant and Pastor Patterson is a son of the soil he has eaten dashin and cocoa and banana and drink jelly coconuts. He's here on the invitation of the Women's Ministries Department of the Northeast Jamaica Conference. And we're happy to have him. He's doing a work that is second to none. And he has stories to tell testimonies to give of how he has impacted lives and how persons are rejoicing because they came in contact with the ministry that he gives he's touching lives therefore I say he's a type of Christ Pastor Patterson will be with us for three weeks beginning on Thursday he began on Thursday his journey and he will be with us until sometime in February I have decided that whereas the church sees its membership and members of the community in need of his service we will take him to your churches so that you don't have to congregate in one place and feel pressured yes so we will take him right to your house door or the church door and you can feel comfortable for him to perform what he has to do and we pray God that healing will come to you as a result. Today it is not strange and if it is strange we want to tr change the tradition that when we have a women's ministry's convocation, men are not supposed to be there. It has never been my philosophy that the women's ministry's department should exclude the men. We are not users nor abusers. So we don't only need them to move the desks and the tables and the chairs. We need them to be a part of our lives and of our ministry. They are good people to have around. Amen. Amen. So today, God has laid a message on the heart of Pastor Patterson that he will present in due season. I ask that you give him your undivided attention as Pastor Patterson will decrease and Jesus Christ himself will increase bringing us the word for today. The next voice you hear after the choir would have given their song of meditation will be that of the servant of God, Pastor James Patterson. God bless you. I want 
to learn from you Please draw me close to you Help me shine your love wherever I may do Lord, I come to you with a contrite heart Humbly I surrender all that I am I want to learn from you Please draw me close to you And share your love and grace in all I do
All that is within me, extol and bless his holy name. And I want to thank Dr. Morrison and her team for inviting me. I am passionate about my Lord, and it's good to be back home. Amen. I recognize that members of the Mount Pleasant team is here. I think my, my father down there. Could you stand dad? And all members from poor uh, Mount Pleasant, the pleasant people. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. I was reflecting that I think the first time I came to Port Antonio Church was about 1970. It has been a long time, but God is good. Amen. Now, these days, I am not really preaching. I'm sharing. I'm telling the story. So I'm going to be preaching, and I noticed that everybody who came before me took their time. But we'll be out of here in good time. Amen. Don't worry about lunch, because we're going to be temperate in all things. Father, take over and do your makeover in Jesus' name. Can I come down closer to you? That's all right? All right. I'm more of a teacher than a preacher these days, so let me come share with you. The text says, bless the Lord, oh what? And some, a part of me. It means, therefore, that the emotional part of me, talking about holistic health, Hello, somebody? The physical part of me. Hello? The social part of me. Every part of me. It means the clothes I wear. The music I listen to. The people I talk to. The job I am involved with. My career. Everything must extol and represent the one who is my boss. Amen? Amen. So we're going to talk today. Now, what I found out happening is that most of the folks who come to me are women. And the only illness of women that I haven't treated is one I haven't seen yet. The good news is God is good. Verse 3 of Psalm 103 says, He, not me, He is the one who healeth. How many? Oh, so if it is lupus, God will take care of us. If it is migraines, he can reverse it. If it's arthritis, it can be resolved. By the way, all three of those have been reversed in my ministry. Because God is good. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. And all that is within me, what? Now... I was looking for one word in the Bible that summarizes this old theme about holistic health and transformation. And I found one word. And it's in Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. And if we can catch this word, this one word, it will transform everything because this word is a transformative word. Jesus says, Ye are the salt. The word is salt. S-A-L-T. How many of you like salt? How many of you like salt? Wait, wait. How many of you would give your children's name salt? Did you hear somebody say salt is bad? Have you ever heard that? That you should be on a low salt diet? There's a doctor who wrote a book called Salt Kills. And when I saw him in the interview, I said, God, get that got me fired up because I'm planning to write a book Salt heals. Jesus says, ye are the salt. Now, most times we talk about salt being a preservative, right? Being a flavor and answer. But today I would like to suggest another definition of salt. Here it is. V-A. Salt is value added. Whoa. So, a Seventh-day Adventist who is salt in Portland, anywhere you live, the property value goes up. Because you are value added. Anywhere you work, you are an asset, not a liability, because you are value added. When you step in church, you didn't just come from Bourbon or Swift River or Buff Bay. You're stepping in as royalty because you're value added. Come on, somebody. You see, the problem is 
I've grown up in the church and some people tend to think that you can't sit beside them because you're not in their category. You're not in their class. But I want you to know, once Jesus' name is beside your name, you are Christian, it means you're value-added. You get it? And there is no symmetry for the first class and upper class and the middle class and the lower class. We're on the same class, sin class. Hello, somebody. I'm not, I'm not preaching. I'm just talking to my family. Because when I found out, our problem is we missed something. The more I treat my people, many of them come to me, they look good, you see. They're well-dressed, but they're not well. They're well-connected, but not well. Three-piece suit, but coming with the arthritis. Something is wrong. Somebody said to me, what are you doing? I went to the conference office in East Jamaica Conference and I saw shelves with books on health. And I said to the person questioning my ministry, we have so many books on health. A lot of information. Then why are our people sick? The problem is not information. Because we, have a, we are a people who well-informed, but what I'm finding out, I'm treating a lot of well-informed, not-so-nice people. I'm just talking to the family. I'm not criticizing or judging. What I'm saying, we need to face it in order to fix it. Get it? Get it? Get it? So, let me say something to you all. We have all the laws of hell. New start. You know all about them. But I'm going to break it down. If you eat all the carrots, Let's pray for him. If you eat all the carrots, get all the grapes, seed extract, but there's somebody in church you do not like, you are not well. I'm breaking it down. And if this suit is what makes me look good, something wrong with me because this is going to be burnt up. I'm just talking to you. It is what's on the inside. Hello, somebody. See, I was here last July. I volunteered and came off August. That's why I met Dr. Morrison. I came back in December because I'm saying, Lord, use me to help my people. Hello, somebody. And when I look, I see everybody's bragging about cars and houses. I said, wait, 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 wait a moment. They're going to be burnt up too. All the degrees you have hanging on the wall will be burnt up. So what you're taking from this world to the next? Talk to me now. Let's put first things first. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. So, Jesus says we must be the soul. Now, I found out that one of the reasons why most of us are sick is because we are salt deficient. I went to Guyana two and a half years ago, and most of the people I met there, a lot of pain. And in the summer, very hot down there, and they drink a lot of water. But they don't use salt. So what's going on? The lot of water is eroding the electrolytes, the minerals out of their body. They're sweating profusely and they're losing their salt. And when I give them my sea salt, they revive. The pain is gone. Now, the doctor says salt is bad. Now, let's go over to Mark chapter 9, verse 50. Everybody turn with me to Mark chapter 9, verse 50. Mark chapter what? I'm teaching. Verse what? 5 0. Mark 9, verse 50. Now, could somebody read for me? Somebody close by, give you this mic. Mark chapter 9, verse 50. Anyone found it? Found it? Found it? Found it? Mark chapter 9, verse 50. Anybody ready? Here she comes. And straightway all the people, when they beheld him, salt is good, but if the salt have lost its saltness, Wherewith will ye season it? Have salt in yourselves and have peace one with another. Now, the doctor on the interview said salt is bad. Jesus, the great physician, says salt is good. Now, I have a question for you. It's a trick question, by the way, setting you up. Who do you believe? Jesus or the doctor? Who do you believe? I'm setting you up. I want to suggest to you that both, okay, the doctor is right and Jesus is not wrong. 
You got that? Both physicians are right. The question is, what type of salt was the doctor talking about? You see? The white salt I used to, to kill the weeds in my garden. That's poisonous. It's bleached. That's why it's white. It has been processed. It's broken. And anything that is broken will break you down. Get that principle. So anything that's broken, so every processed food has been processed, has been broken, has been wounded, so the wounded will wound you. That's why we need to eat that with whole, complete, total. That's the principle. Amen? So white rice is broken, is wounded. It will injure you because it is all broken consumables break you down. That's the principle. Hello, somebody? It's better to eat the carrot than to drink the juice. Because when you take the juice from the carrot, although at times we ask you to do that because most times these days, the carrot you are eating today, it wasn't the same carrot 35 years ago because the soil is not right. You get it? So we have to do a mix-up. But what I'm saying to us, we need to get back to basics and understand we need to go back to the source because we are taking a lot of substitutes and forgetting the source of our being. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. So this sister came to me. She said, pa, when I met her, when I met her, when I met her, she took about five minutes from her bedroom to come to the door. And she was like this. Ah, ah, ah. Stage four lung cancer. When you hear the word cancer, you must say praise the Lord. I'm trying to, I'm trying to teach you something. Your mindset affects the outset. Outlook. Everybody here has cancer cells. Every one of us. Every one of us. It's part of your immune system, by the way. But when they start misbehaving, it's when we create a problem. You get what I'm saying? So really, really, we should not be afraid of cancer. All there is, there's some toxin in the system, some fungus there, and we need to create an environment where the fungus cannot take root and thrive. Get it? So once we clean the system, the cancer is gone. But she went to the guys who don't know about cleaning, so they gave her the medications that are toxic, they're broken, so they break her down. And they gave her the chemo. How can you heal poison with poison? So, after they maxed out the chemo and took our money through the insurance, because if you're good insurance, they love you a lot. I mean, mm -hmm. they told her, there's nothing else we can do for you. In other words, set your house in order. You know what I'm talking about? Call the family members together and get ready for a ride to the cemetery. But she knew that there was one who was the final say. And she consulted him, and so she called me. I said to her, sister, I can't promise you anything, but God and I will work together. And so we started fasting and prayer, and the Lord showed me what to do. Now, here's the key. She believed. The problem with us is that we don't believe. See, we don't believe. That's why we have all the books, and we're still sick we want to do our own thing. But if we belong to the boss, we need to hear the voice of the boss. Now, long and short of the story is, that was over three years ago. She's alive and kicking. You didn't hear what I said? And now she's coming to Jamaica. By the way, she is from Jamaica. She's coming to Jamaica, taking all the leaves you have down here, guava leaf, and steak and selling it in America. And you down here looking, you see the problem is your mindset, you need salt. Some of you, 
You don't eat breadfruit of somebody. And if I, okay, you don't eat breadfruit. Well, I package breadfruit in Florida and quad squadash. Send it down here. You go to uh, some hotel in, in Montego Bay and call your friends and family and say, oh, well, you know what happened? I'm, I'm having some delicacy here. Squadash and run down. It's yellow heart breadfruit. <laughs> Are you with me so far? It's our mentality. So Romans 12 says, we must be transformed by the ren the what? The re the what? The, re the renewing of the mind. So Saul comes into it. Look at the text. The last part says, have salt and peace. Here's my discovery. Every person in your family, at the job, in the church, who is a pain in every part of your life, is salt deficient. You want me to repeat that? They get problems on the church board. They run on after offices. They're miserable, cantankerous, hard to deal with. Every Sabbath is a, is, a, is a dead day. If the Sabbath is a delight, why are you coming to church? The joy of the Lord. Mm, 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 the joy. If you are salt, folks, if you are value added, bring out the best. So what I'm doing now, here's what I'm teaching. If you want the church to grow, if you want to transform people, salt means adding value. What it is, you must bring out the best in people. Come here, my sister. Now, I'm demonstrating here. I'm a teacher. I go to her place and find out that, this is a real story I'm telling you. I'm just using her to substitute. That I go to treat her for pain. When I walk into her house, I discovered that she has an industrial machine. This is a real story I'm telling you. And I tell her, I'm going to treat you before I treat you. She said, what do you mean, Pastor? I said, do you make men's pants? She said, yes. I said, show me an exam. She showed me her husband's church clothes and work clothes. I said, then why are you not selling? She said, because the bread you're not supporting me. You know why I paused? That's part of our problem. Here's the part of the problem. We have too many reporters in our church. And few supporters. I'm not judging. I'm saying we have to face it to fix it. So what I did, I ordered six pants from her. And all the six pants that she made for me, I'm using them to advertise her in Jamaica. You may be seated. Say hello for her. Amen for her. So you see a young person in this church who's an artist. I'm breaking it down. You are sought. You are value. You are a value. So if that person doesn't have a business card, help that person to have a business card and elevate their skill and their business. Hello, somebody. So we are not competing. We are complimenting. We are affirming. And I tell you something. When you affirm people, they support you. When you affirm people, you don't have to tell them to come to the crusade tomorrow night. Can I tell you a story? It's Women's Day. The woman, there's a woman's leader director in New York. She was conducting the choir on Women's Day. And at the end of the second song, she turned to the congregation and said, please folks, pray for me. Because she said, I don't know how I'm going to face my doctor. She's on disability, could hardly come to church. She has a bad left knee. They had operated on her. She could only bend the knee like this. And the voice said to me, go salt her. So after the meeting, after the preaching, I spoke to her. I said, I know you don't believe, but I said, just trust me and work with me. So she came to my office there in New York. And before anybody comes, one thing I want you to let you know, before you come to me, you are prayed up and I fast for you before you come. Because it's he is the one who heal it. Give him credit. Give him praise. Never take any credit for yourself. Give the one who is the boss praise. And so she came and I said to her, number one, they told her, you're going to need another surgery. That foot was black, black, black. I said, the sister, I said, your knee, your knee is not that bad because it is lacking surgery. 
I say your knee is inflamed because there's an energy crisis there. There is no proper flow. The oxygen, nutrients not getting there. There's a waste management issue you're having. I say I'm going to work on it for you. So we worked together, prayed. I had my new Christian singer, singer is in the background playing. And we treated her. She got a few supplements. She left with her husband to another state. Three weeks afterward, I saw her. She said, Pastor, good news. I have some good news for you. I said, praise the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Hallelujah. So, when I saw her after lunch, she said, the first good news is, my husband is wondering why I don't use a walker anymore. For two years, she walks with a walker. She doesn't need it anymore. Amen. You're not here at all. <laughs> she said, secondly, as you said, the doctors say, I don't need surgery anymore. I saved a lot of money right there. A discomfort. I said, by the way, as we spoke, I said, by the way, you can go back to work now. And she smiled. Folks, anytime she sees me in church, I passed her because I salted her. I affirmed her. So that's what the church is about, folks. People don't make changes because you tell them. They make changes because they believe you believe in them. You care deeply about what matters most to them. That's why the woman let her water pot with Jesus. Because he was touching her mutton. Folks, there are many persons who will try to hurt you. I want to give you some mental buffers. If somebody walked out on you, ladies, don't say another person walk out on me and get us. Don't, don't throw in a pity party. Have what I call a victor's mentality. The victor's mentality say, what? He couldn't handle me. Amen, somebody? Amen, somebody? And then you say, oh, 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 I won't put your baggage on my luggage. It's not worth the carriage. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. Amen, somebody? Amen. By the way, men, I found out, basically only God can understand a woman. You know why? You know why? Because man was sleeping while she was being made. I hope you got the drift of that. You got the drift of that? So what we need to do, men, is to appreciate them. Hello, somebody? Elevate them. So if you live in the same home, hey, hey, if you can eat out of the plate, wash it too. Make her load lighter. Am I talking the truth? Now, I, I noticed something. My mother taught me something. Uh, this is something I couldn't understand. I said, only God can understand a woman. My mother would be very sick in her room, but if my mother remember that there's a fork in the kitchen that is dirty, she would hold her back. I'm telling you the truth. Who knows I'm talking the truth? There's something strange about you women. I mean, if a, a real woman, if she knows there's something dirty in the kitchen, she can't sleep at night. Women, am I talking the truth? No matter how much pain you have, there's a greater pain in the kitchen. And until the place is clean, you won't sleep. Who knows I'm talking the truth? Raise your hand if you know I'm talking the truth. Men, we can't understand that, so leave it alone. And let the church roll on. Hey, so, by the way, if you, if you sleep in a bed, you can make it up too. Make their low light. Hello, somebody. Because women have many seasons in one season. Uh, I'm just telling the truth. That's all their makeup is. They could be happy in the morning. In the afternoon, it's another mood. In the evening, it could be winter time. At night, it could be summertime. I'm saying they have a lot of moods. And only Jesus can satisfy their soul. So we need to ask God to help us to work with them. And so we salt them. You know, brothers, don't forget, husbands, don't forget your wife's birthday. I'm just trying to lay it plain here this morning. Oh, the anniversary. Hello, somebody. Because if you, can, <laughs> if you forget the anniversary, you may be living with Mr. Annie very soon. Just make sure you don't forget. Am I talking the truth in here? So what I'm saying here, as a church, as a people, we need not, we need to understand 
Women don't need to be tolerated. They need to be celebrated. Let me say it again. We don't tolerate women. We celebrate them. They have gifts and talents. They are gifts to us. All of us came from one of them. Because there's no Adam in here. Amen, somebody? So let's have the concept. So when you leave the church today, you're gonna, somebody's try to be heard from. He said, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm going to salt you. So you notice what happened? Here's what happened with salt. Salt is like the, bas well, the point guard position in basketball. The point guard is the person who brings out the best in the other players. He's the leader. So when you come to church, don't focus on the sister's dress or her hat. Find a way to lift that person. Amen, somebody? And when people mess up, don't walk out on them. Give them a lift. I'm not talking theory. Years ago as I passed there in St. Mary, there's a situation I had one afternoon, on Sabbath afternoon, close to AY. One of the sheep in the church, you know, sheep always know sheep's business, came to tell the pastor that the unmarried treasurer was pregnant. And that broke my heart. So I met with the sister, found the other party was involved, because sometimes we forgot there's another party. I'm just talking. I'm just talking. You read between the lines. We're just being real. Hello, somebody? Okay, so here what happens. I spoke to her, and she agreed with me that the day of her marriage, I could baptize her, which I did. Now, that was a problem for me now, because the scribes and Pharisees who don't know about salt, I'm pausing, decided that this young minister so I've lost something up here that I should have given her eight to nine months to put her act together because she embarrassed the church. So I told those saints to Bible me. Show me a text that says, today if you mess up, wait until nine months to make a recovery. They couldn't Bible me. So they were all silent because I was adding value to somebody's life. You see, when somebody's in trouble, they're drowning. You don't go out there and Brother or sister, how oh, you got in trouble? No, no. Throw out the lifeline. Some poor struggling seamen, you may rescue you. If the gospel is good news, why are we condemning people? When people are down, they need a lift. So the time came when the baby came. I'm talking one woman's minister. I'm talking about salt, you know. Yeah, you're talking about adding value. So the baby came, and of course, I, I, we brought in food with gerber, right? So come on, gerber, G-I-B-R, yeah. We brought in pampers. That's another time when my problems began. Because now I heard, oh boy, pastor, so nice to the sister, you know. It must be pastor's baby. <laughs> so the word came to me, oh, I love those kind of, I said, yes, every baby in the church is pastor's baby, because I am Shepherd not only of the sheep, but of the lambs. Uh, hallelujah. You see, when people don't understand the gospel, they become troublemakers. When Adam uh, sinned, God didn't walk and turn his back. He walked toward him. And when God came to Adam, he didn't say, you're worthless, good for nothing, you mess up my name. He said, Adam, I miss my time with you. Where are you? But what we do is, person mess up. And we who are their chums, we're gone. But if that is the gospel, then Calvary was a mistake. Because he became sin for us. He became our garbage collector. Hello, somebody? And with his stripes, we are healed. Amen? You know, I, I saw talk like that years ago before my grandfather died. He said to me, son, do the people understand the gospel? That's our problem. As I showed you some of us this morning, here's our, why we miss the gospel. We miss John 1, 14. It says, And we beheld his glory, that's Jesus. Glory as of the only and begotten of the Father. Full of what? Full of what? Full of what? Full of what? GNT. The problem is, as a church, we are well informed. Not so nice people. Because we are full of truth, but we forget we are half right. The other part is called grace. 
So where's the kindness and the support? Ooh, that's how you transform people by looking beyond their faults and see their needs and when you see their needs you don't walk away whatever you can do in your power in your sphere of influence lift them give them new life I am come that they may have life and more of it to the fullest the lady came to me said Patterson every time I go to my bed my blood pressure goes up. No doctor medication taking it down. I said, I said, sister, no doctor can help you. She said, what do you mean, Patterson? I said, because when you go to bed, some goes on. I said, your high blood pressure has nothing to do with physical. It's emotional. I said to her, when you go to bed at night, you are thinking about the people who hurt you. That's why your pressure go up. And most of you are sick, not because of the food you're eating, but what's eating you. And she confessed and told me the people were hurting her. <clears throat> if somebody hurt you 25 years ago, and 20 second, 25 seconds ago, you remember the incident, the body doesn't make a difference between 25 years and 25 seconds. You can have a heart attack on the spot. It relieves the pain, and you're killing your liver. Any person, this is an oxymoron. You cannot be a hateful Christian. I don't know what that you either a Christian or not. Dr. Morrison was talking about it earlier. Stress and anger and bitterness kills the liver and your digestive system. And if you are a vegetarian, by the way, I preach health. If you're a vegetarian and you eat the pasta in the morning and the deacon for, for lunch and the other person for dinner, you are a... Uh, you're not a vegetarian. You got my message, right? You heard what I said. I'm a teacher. I'm a teacher. So you heard what I said, right? The can word. And if you're all the things you're doing is made out of a can, you're not a vegetarian. You're a canyan. Because vegetables don't come from a can. It comes from a tree. Amen. Amen. I grew up in Portland. I grew, I grew up on a farm. I know what trees look like. I had breadfruit. I love yellow yam and all of that stuff. So what I'm saying, folks, with all we're doing here, with all the new start, new start, nutrition, exercise, water, you know, sunshine, temperance, air rest, trust in God. Knowing this, knowing that a bus will take you to a certain place and a go to the bus stop will help you. And if you go to the bus stop, get on the bus. Make sure you're up here, by the way. But faith is an active thing. Now, quickly, I'm going to close now. I'm going to close now. I have a lot to tell you about this afternoon. Can I finish it this afternoon? Here goes. I'm going to do it. Now, Leviticus 2, verse 13. Could someone read that for me? Leviticus 2, 13. Sorry about that, but I have to close because everything has to be done. Balance. Amen? Leviticus 2, 13. What does it say? Doctor, read it. Leviticus 2, 13. Anybody found it? Leviticus 2, 13. Am I making sense to anybody? Okay. And every oblation of thy meat offering shalt thou season with salt. Neither shalt thou suffer the salt of the covenant of thy God to be lacking from thy meat offering. With all thine offerings thou, thou, salt, thou shalt offer salt. Did you hear that? Every offering in the sanctuary had to be salted. Let me repeat that. Every offering man gave to God had to have that salt added to it. Salt talks about high energy, renewable energy. Salt talks about preserving. God wants to salt us. God wants to preserve us. He can keep you from falling, keep you from decaying and getting worse into a sinful condition. Amen. No matter what you've been through, no matter what names you have been called, no matter how long you have been in the church, it doesn't matter. But if any command be in Christ, Christ can do the preserving. 
He added value to your life. The fact that you're alive is a gift from God. A gift from God. And as I close, I remember going to visit a lady in Orlando, Florida years ago. And I know I was tired, minutes after 10, going to 11. She said, Pastor, don't leave the house, sleep in the living room. My boys and myself are here. I said, sister, I understand, but I'm going home. And about eight minutes from where I was living, about eight minutes from where I was living, I heard, buru, 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 buru. I was driving sleeping, and the vehicle was going into some trees off the curb. And all I remember is, I said, Lord, if you save my life, I'll take care of your people. That's why I'm here today. I made a vow to my God, and you are helping me to keep it today. When you make a vow to God, be serious about your commitment. And Dr. Morris doesn't know I'm going to say this. She has been asked to be in charge to coordinate women's ministry. You all need to salt her ministry. Make her look good and better and better. Make each other look good and better. Stop the criticism and start the lifting, the complimenting. Amen. And the affirming and let the church roll on. And if you moved out of grace and fell off, fell off, there's mercy with the Lord. And he will surely give you rest by trust. He stand with me in his work. Could you stand with me? Only trust him. Only trust him. Only trust him. Him only. I'm going to make a simple appeal. Today you're saying by the grace of God, you're making your commitment. I made my vow to change your mindset. And start, instead of looking what's wrong with the church, start being proactive and say, what can I do to make it better? If it's just your prayer and commitment, raise your hand with me. God is able. God is Amen. Father, we raise these right hands to him who sits on the right hand of God. We need to be in right relationship with you so that we can represent the character of God in being value added to our families to our communities. Lord we have hurt one another but today we are saying take my life take my voice take my feet take my skills and Lord help me not to brag about what I got but help me to know that too much is given much is acquired and we are raising our hands and say Lord use me use me in the crusade tonight or tomorrow night use me wherever I am placed so that your name can be glorified and lives can be lifted. Take over now. We thank you for our women. Oh Lord, keep blessing, loving and forgiving them and all of us until we hear from your lips. Well done. We praise you. We bless you. We magnify you. Forgive it all our iniquities and eat out all our diseases. Keep us as salt. Adding value to lives, we pray. In Jesus' name, you may be seated. Thank you so much. You are value added. Amen. Amen. You are salt. And if you came here this morning as sugar, you're leaving as salt. If you came here feeling that you were not worth it, you are nobody, today God has affirmed you. You are value added. Thank you very much, Pastor Patterson. May God bless you, brethren, as we fellowship and worship together. 
Thank you, Dr. Morrison. After such a stirring, um, well, not sermon, but teaching by Pastor Patterson, I know that your souls have been refreshed from above. And now we will stand to sing our closing hymn, number 308, Holy Dine. Holy Dine, 308. Mm -hmm. 